Um, yeah, we have, a, we have a good question yes. um, from the audience. And, yes, uh, we do. <laughs> Well, I was going to use her story. Obviously, I won't use her name, and, yeah. and I won't be obvious about it. Uh, I'll maybe say I'm Marin County property. So, mm -hmm. uh, but I think that that's a great example. And we can just, you know, just talk about, you know, isn't that, isn't that strange? What's wrong with those banks? Well, no, she didn't even have her tax. It's still a lot of stuff. Yeah. Do, do you? Well, we don't, and we don't have to get into that detail because again, what's yeah. interesting about the story for, from an audience perspective is like, really? Are you kidding? Wow. Yeah. You know, and and or if there happens to be a mortgage broker or a realtor listening in, hearing the story, and then going, oh my gosh, a, a private lender that can do a consumer purchase loan. I, I thought they were. I thought that was impossible. What? Why is that impossible? Well, a oh. lot, a lot of uh, mortgage brokers. Oh, they don't have a license. No, well, they don't have a license. And, you know. no. Yeah. It, well, it, the the the, the truth, uh, the, the simple fact is, is that if a mortgage broker calls anybody else in private money, first they're going to say no, and they may even go on to say, we can't do it because Dodd-Frank has made it illegal with Section 32 and blah, 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 and, and uh, uh, which is not true, but a lot of guys in private money believe they can't legally make a consumer loan because of the new restrictions. Um, you can, you just have to know how to do it. Yeah, <laughs> but for the audience, it's like, yeah. you know, do you want to lead with that since it's an interesting enough story? Uh, Let's leave okay. some newsy stuff. Well, I can talk about what's going on in the market. It's yeah, let's hot, do that. hot, hot. Yeah. And then it's changing, changing, let's changing. Changing, changing. Here we go. Ready? Hey. Welcome. You're listening to The Best of Investing. I'm your host, Edward Brown. I'm proud to have as my co host. Do you hear that? I'm proud to have my Yes, you are. Mark Hunt of Pacific <laughs> Private Money, one of California's fastest growing mortgage investment firms. And I'm proud also to have Patty Cohen proud of Pacific. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Of Pacific Union International. Thank you. Our phone number is 888-912-1190. Use that number to answer the trivia question for three tanning certificates given away during this show. Those certificates are not sponsored by the station, but by Tan Bell, a tanning salon with two locations in San Francisco and one in Marin. Again, today's uh, trivia theme is just random trivia. you got to keep everything Random. Suspense. We just found it lying in the corner. Right? That's right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Patty, what do you got for us today? Well, it's a it's a hot, hot, hot market, and, and it's all over the Bay Area. Um, it's interesting in that the first two months of the year were out of control in terms of multiple offers and, you know, 14 offers on whatever and 10% over asking all over the Bay Area. Now, caveat is it depends on the price and it depends on where, but part of why that happened is that it rained so much and sellers were not in the game. They were waiting till they looked pretty in the spring and buyers sat on the sidelines last half of the year while they were distracted by the election. So that's part of it. And we are still sort of in a kind of schizophrenic market because on one level that's still continuing, but as more properties come on the market and as buyer demand gets absorbed partially, we have a situation where some properties that we're, uh, this is the week right now. This is the week where, oh, I saw five or six properties last week that I thought were going to get the multiple offers and they have their offer date and they're still here. So it may be that they will go this week at full price and all the buyers got a, got afraid really that they didn't want to bid it up 20%. So the, the idea is if you see a good property that you like, make an offer as long as it's priced correctly and, and sellers, it's time to get out because the market is shifting and it's really important to be out there now and Sell your house now. Well, you're right about the timing, um, uh, Patty, because I've got a house that uh, I uh, went in with uh, one of my rehab clients as a kind of a joint venture equity partner with him, and we remodeled a home in Oakland and got on the market uh, early February. And we were actually surprised uh, that the offers didn't come in as high as we thought, uh, but we picked what we thought was the best offer, strong, uh, strong uh, uh, financial statement, good, good lender. And we're in contract. In fact, we're supposed to close now um, in another week. Uh, but kind of in, in the midst of that contract, uh, they did ask for a significant reduction in price. When interestingly enough, the appraisal didn't come in as high uh, and we, uh, as the as the uh, purchase price. Mm -hmm. And you know, I read the appraisal. I, I thought it was wrong. They didn't actually use comps uh, uh, from nearby condos. But anyway, to make a long story short, they asked for a reduction and. 
realtor said to me, you know, oh, I've gotten a whole bunch of calls on this property recently, and if we if we pull tight and they and they ball and cancel, we'll probably get a higher price for it. And now, do you let that buyer know that? Um, well, I told them so we we countered much less than the um, reduction they wanted, and we took it. That's good. <laughs> okay. so, well, one one barometer of how things are going is how are the stagers doing? Are they busy? And oh, how are the transaction coordinators doing? So my transaction, I had a deal fall through in Belmar and Keys that I, I was my listing and love this. Wells Fargo pre-approved them and then with 20% down and one week into it or a couple days into it, the guy should retire. He's saying, oh, I think you're going to have to put more down. A week later when we hounded him every single day, he said, you need to put an additional $200,000 down. And this was a pre-approval. Wow. So she can't do it. It's over. But my transaction coordinator said, "Oh my God, another one! There, there's so many falling out right now. Huh. So there's, it's, it's a shifting kind of market. I don't want to be an alarmist at all, but it's shifting, and it has been shifting. Well, the falling out would be, wouldn't that normally be for financing uh, issues, well, or is it uh, a, a myriad of? Uh, a lot of things. Sometimes it's cold feet. I paid too much, or I saw something better, or there's, uh, I, I." I am in this, but I'm not going to be putting, I don't want any surprises with inspections. And there are, are surprises. So they, they move on. Well, and that was the reason why I decided to take the burden to hand. So, you know, even oh, with my yeah. agent telling me, you know, I could probably get you another, you know, thirty to 50000 on that. That sounds really good, mm -hmm. but, you know, it could be another 30 to 45 days. I could use the money now and redeploy it. So I just decided, look, you know, we'll just take the burden. And there's, no, and there's no guarantee. And there's, there's no, no guarantee. And that's, that's exactly right. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. the new buyer could do the same thing to you. Yeah. No, absolutely. Well, that's, that's, that's really cool. So I know the weather certainly here in the Bay Area played a major factor in February being really slow among realtors and mortgage brokers and other private money lenders like Pacific Private Money uh, who were just were complaining about how slow business was. And you know, I think our loan individual. applications were way down in February. Now that's actually turned around. I mean, we've, the last two weeks, our phones have been ringing off the hook. So our pipeline is, is fat yeah. and full again, and, and my, uh, my employees are getting nervous. <laughs> and that's a good that's thing. That's a good thing. I like them on their When toes. we come back, you've got a great story to, uh, to share with yeah. the audience. So I'm about to, to put my 10th. Sale in escrow. Nice. Today. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay. I uh, want to make a quick mention here for the video. 70 Gold Country Lodge, which has been called by guests a hidden gem, a <coughs> place, and a great place of down home country charm. Uh, give them a call at 209 878 3400 or go to ygclodge.com. All right. Here's our first trivia question Which 1865 classic novel features a thief? trying to bury his past and become a respectable mayor, but the police inspector won't let him. All right, you guys will know this once uh, if you don't know it now. All right, that's our question. Uh, call 888-912-1190 to answer that question. Here it is again. Which 1865 classic novel features a thief trying to bury his past and become a respectable mayor, mayor but the police inspector won't let him? All right, don't touch that dial. The best investing will be right back with a very interesting story that Mark's got for us. All right. I always want to keep the audience Two on minutes. suspenders. <laughs> or in suspenders. In suspenders. <laughs> don't keep me on suspenders. Turtley, as uh, Sarah's boyfriend would say. Turtley. Turtley? Turtley. That's yeah. funny. Yeah, we, oh had, we actually used that, uh, that word um, in our vocabulary. There was a a movie, oh shoot, now I can't remember the comedian, he's a Mill Valley comedian, Dana Carvey, oh, okay. and he did this um, oh. comedy many, many years ago where there's a scene where he's trying to get into the turtle club, yeah. and he dresses like a turtle, turtle yeah. and then in the movie, they, right. they won't let him in, he's all, am I not yeah, turtly enough yeah, that's the right. yeah. <laughs> And so Lisa and I have been using that term, oh, you look really turtly <laughs> That, that was one of our Master family, of the Skies uh, was the yeah. of that movie. Yeah, Master of the Skies. That was, that was funny. Anyway, turtle. That's a turtle. It wasn't a turtle enough for the game. Yeah. <laughs> That's, That's so funny. So we were always talking, oh, you're a turtle. I'll have to let Sarah know that word works. I don't think she even saw that movie. Yeah. That's hilarious. Okay. Well, I have a guess for the uh, trivia question. It's not yeah, yeah, Master of the Skies. Yeah, but, okay. I have a oh, guess. Yes, I guess. I have a guess. Okay. Not yeah, a guess. That's right. Okay, here we okay. go. Is it 
Welcome back to The Best of Investing. Again, I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Mark Hahn and Patty Hills. First trivia question was, which 1865 classic novel features a thief trying to bury his past and become a respectable mayor, but the police inspector won't let him? I'm guessing Pink Panther? No. <laughs> that might not be old enough. Uh, uh, Less Miserables, oh, Les Miserables, by Victor Hugo. I'm just not a literary follower. <laughs> Listen, if, if, if it's not Harold and the Purple Crayon, I don't know it. <laughs> that was my favorite book. Uh, I also want to make a quick mention here for the Wine Garden uh, Children's Center, which uh, if your child can't hear or speak, where do you go? Uh, that's the place you go. Children's uh, excuse me, Wine Garden Children's Center. They provide innovative and effective therapy and education services to children. Very, very good organization. They have a special golf tournament, too, Monday, April 17th, hosted at the exclusive Peninsula Golf and Country Club in San Mateo. Check them out, because dinner's included. Buy your tickets or support them at listenspeaklearn.org. Nice. Okay, so, Mark, we told the audience when we came back here you had a great story. So, um, I'm Mark, <coughs> I'm a broker and president of Pacific Private Money. We're a private money real estate lender. We're non-bank real estate lender. Alternative financing is what some people refer to us as. Or, there's a new term that's been coined lately, uh, marketplace lender. Like, uh, a lot of these new fintech and other internet startups uh, refer to themselves as marketplace lenders. We would be referred to as a regional marketplace lender because we really concentrate and focus on Northern California. We're not looking to be nationwide. But people call us as a plan B when plan A fails or if they're just not bank financeable. We are one of the few private resources for a consumer loan on an owner-occupied home. Uh, why the distinction between consumer? Uh, well, the lending laws nowadays are heavily weighted in favor of the consumer. But if you're a real estate investor and you're buying property to fix and flip, there are all kinds of um, private lenders that will uh, loan to you. In fact, that's the most competitive area of lending right now is the investment purpose or business purpose uh, fix and flip type of lending. Um, guys are uh, uh, Lenders are falling all over themselves to lend to that group because the regulations are very, very low. It's, it's, it's lightly regulated, whereas on the consumer side, you need to have additional licensing, there's additional underwriting guidelines, you have to have specialty software, you have to comply with TRID and a myriad of other uh, regulations, all designed to um, prevent uh, those predatory lending practices, as defined by the government, by the way, uh, which they say uh, were uh, resulted or, or helped uh, um, uh, be the catalyst for the financial market meltdown of 2008. So for better or worse, uh, we are in an environment where um, getting consumer financing to purchase a home loan, if you can't get it by the banks, there are very few private uh, uh, companies you can go to. Pacific Private Money is one of them. So I have a story here that's kind of interesting, and, and this is um, the first time I have heard this scenario. So I get a call. In fact, this was referral um, from our friend here, Patty Cohen. Um, she's working with a client, and uh, uh, they are looking to buy a home, and they have 50% down to buy a home in the Bay Area. We love that. That's a very low loan-to-value situation. Uh, I asked about their income. Their income is very strong, very, very strong. I was surprised at the number that uh, they shared with me. Um, they want to buy a house for um, uh, and put 50% down. So, so what's the problem? Well, the problem is, is that income comes from a trust. The person is currently not working, and that money comes from a trust. Well, I don't do conventional finances, so I don't actually know why, you know, in the banking world that you know, they can't look at that kind of money. And if uh, Rob or, or um, if Rob were here, um, or Ed Diaz from uh, Movement Mortgage, our other co-host, they could probably tell me what, what the challenge is there. But um, I, I just thought, well, yeah, absolutely, we could help you do that loan. So we're going to help this person uh, purchase the loan uh, by providing them with financing. And we're next, we're also going to help them find a source for lower rate or conventional financing, because I have to believe that there's a resource out there that they can go to. But um, I do understand that that person probably wouldn't be able to buy a house or go enter into a contract to buy a house with that scenario, because it might be one of those situations where it might take 60 or 90 days, or maybe even longer, to sure. uh, to qualify under that situation. So, so again, um, 
Yeah. Yep. That is similar to kind of other uh, situations that we get, uh, like maybe uh, um, we get probate situations where yeah. uh, siblings are looking, one sibling wants to buy the, the parent's home, they're no longer alive, uh, the other sibling wants to sell, um, and uh, usually those are situations where bank financing is typically not, typically not an option. Another one that we're getting a lot lately is uh, um, people are exercising options to purchase property, and they got into those options maybe three or four years ago at a very, very low strike price. The strike price is the contract price that you enter into at the time you get that, uh, that option. And uh, we're, we did one uh, recently for a family that entered into an option in 2012 to purchase a home. I don't have the numbers off the top of my head, but we were essentially able to make them really high loan to value on that because the appraisal came in significantly higher than the contract price. Right, so loan to cost, right. So so we made a loan to cost of about 90%. So we gave 90% financing to exercise that option because the loan to value was below 70%, which is our usual threshold. So anyway, for more information about how you um, uh, might be able to take advantage of the less restrictions that uh, we're still res we're still restricted at Pacific Private Money in, in terms of how we uh, paper the loans and the disclosures, et cetera. We still, you know, we're, we're still bound by anti-predatory lending practices, but we do say yes when the banks say no, or let's just say we can say yes when the, when the banks say no. Uh, and all you have to do is give us a call and tell us about your situation over the phone. And we can generally tell you in a conversation, a short conversation, whether we can do the loan or not. We can give you a very fast yes and uh, conversely a very fast no. We don't waste your time. We're not going to put you through this whole process and drag you along and then tell you 30, 60, 90 days into it that, oh, I'm sorry, we can't do it for you. We're, uh, we're, we, we make money by uh, being nimble and fast. fast and and we're fast, friendly, and reliable. Those are our three uh, promises. Wasn't, and, wasn't uh, that, that didn't George from uh, It's a Wonderful Life uh, from the Bailey Banks or something to yeah. have the same kind of attitude, right? Yeah, that's or, right. Or right. Fast, friendly, and reliable. Uh, that's right. <laughs> but anyway, go, go to Pacific. Give us a chance. That's right. Go to PacificPrivateMoney.com. All our info is on there phone numbers, faces, addresses. Uh, we hide nothing, we open the kimono. <laughs> <laughs> we bear all PacificPrivateMoney.com. If uh, for more information on how you can get uh, financing when the bank says no, if you're a real estate professional, either a realtor or a mortgage broker, you need to know that there are companies like Pacific Private Money out there that can and will do consumer purchase financing. Many of you out there believe it can't be done, and have been told by people in our industry that it can't be done. It's not true. Don't believe it. Give us a call, Pacific Private Money, 415-883-2150. All right, when we come back, we got a very interesting email from Patty. It has to do with Zillow and pricing the house. <laughs> that would be very good. I want to make a quick mention here to my friends at HighTechScreensAndShades.com. Call Rick at 415-328-4613. You know, when it uh, gets really hot, I got these awesome shades. And my PG&E bill goes down nice. wow. because it covers the uh, just like these uh, that I have That's in the great. office here. It, uh, yeah, it doesn't. I'm saving oodles of money on my PG&E. We know you love to shades. save money. I, you, we, we know I love to save money. <laughs> to call uh, Rick at 3415-328-4613 and uh, give him a call and see what he can do for you at HighTechScreenAndShades.com. All right, so here is our second trivia question, and it is: Can you name? Three other presidents besides Clinton, whose first name was William. All right? Call 888-912-1190. you got to think about that one. Just write them down. Three other presidents besides Clinton, whose first name was William. Don't touch that dial. The best of best will give you right back. Is that okay. Taft one? I'm not sure. So now I just get an email that that's Taft. Right. Did you say Taft? My <laughs> favorite president. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for that. President William. I already wrote for William Taft. Taft. Yeah. Taft. So now I just got an email from the place that Margaret wants. Somebody else is writing it off. Ooh. And she's in the thing. She just called me. And right I'm like, quick. I'm like, for my personality, I'm like, I gotta get over there now. <laughs> now how did you? You said you you have ten. I, I, in, in I, what period of time? Uh, this year. That's awesome. This year. And honestly, most agents I'm talking to haven't had any because they think that nothing's going on. But I block the first quarter because I just tell people this is the time to do it. Yeah. Yeah. 
plus the 10. Right. Well, when I count this one today, which I got to get written immediately, so that we'll get it, we'll get it done. So, how many assistants do you have? I don't know. Really? No. How do you do all that I have, yourself? Well, you would be able to do that. Um, I have it as somebody that does the escrows. Well, I guess well, I should say I have one. Hmm. Yeah. But you got to be hands on, you know? Well, true. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, still, you I don't do all your own open houses, though. Not really, no, because I sell right. them to the butcher. Market. <laughs> <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> That's how you do it. Yes. And don't work with fires. Open house, schmoping house. I, just I have things blowing up right here, and they're fires. Yeah. Fires are much yeah. more intense. Yeah, you got to get deal with their. You got to have that, make sure they have an agent. Yeah, so I mean, not that they're intense, but what's yeah. going on is intense. Yeah. Center 740. Okay. Uh, this one is 810. 810. Okay. Is it ready? Yep. We'll get it here. Welcome back to the best of investing. Edward Brown here, along with Mark Lump and Patty Thorne. Second trivia question. Can you name three other presidents besides Clinton whose first name was William? Mark, who's your favorite president? <laughs> William Howard Taft. That's right. Okay, yeah, that's one of them. I mean, in this world, how many people favorite president was Taft? <laughs> All I remember is he weighed over 300 pounds. That's the only thing I know about him. I think it was about 1919. Uh, okay, who are the other two Williams? I don't know. One of them got assassinated. Oh, Harrison. No, oh, well, uh, William okay, Harrison. okay, William Henry Harrison, he was the shortest living president okay. one month right. in 1841. Shot. He died of a cold. Oh, my God. And then, uh, William McKinley. Oh, oh McKinley. McKinley. Yeah, yeah. Right. there you go. Yeah. All right. All right. So, um, hey, before we do, I do want to make uh, another quick mention here for the uh, Glen Ellen Inn. You ever been there? Oh, I'd love is to go there. Isn't that yeah. beautiful? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so a getaway to the wine country is the perfect way to relax this winter. Uh, the Glen Ellen Oyster Bar and Grill. Uh, they also get the Martini Bar, too. I love that. Uh, perfect place for a romantic meal for parties with friends and family. Uh, they also have their secret cottages. Check them out at glenellenin.com. Okay, so, Patty, we got an email for you. It says here, we're having trouble discerning the correct price for our property. It was appraised at $1.235 million, uh, million. Zillow says it's worth $1.345, and our realtor recommends pricing it at $1.235. Million to forty nine, and a house down the street just sold for one million one ninety. I'm so confused. <laughs> it is confusing. I mean, and that's that's four different prices there. But really, there's about ten different opinions because there's the sellers, the seller's family, the neighbors, the buyer, the, the buyer's cat, agent, the, the dog, cat, the bird. <laughs> exactly, the appraiser, which does factor into this, yeah. uh, because if it doesn't appraise you, we've got issues. Uh, I mean, and then there's Zillow's opinion. Or the computer-generated opinion, right. and, which sometimes is amazingly right on, but often is off, very off. And if they were always off in the same direction, we could figure out oh, that's how. True. But sometimes they're really low, and sometimes they're really high. And and when you get into the luxury market, like over three million, maybe over four or five million, Zillow is out to lunch. Well, because they don't know. Well, one of the things is they don't know what it looks like inside with remodeling yeah. and all that, right? And why is it like that? Um, because they're, they're about 50%, they're, they're like, an $8 million house is often appraised at $4 million. I'll take it. Yeah, I know, exactly. So that's why it's so confusing. So, um, you know, and sellers have their opinion, buyers have their opinion, but Zillow is the go-to for everyone these yeah. days. Unfortunately, there's also Trulia too, and, and Red, Red Redfin. Redfin. Yeah. yeah, well, Trulia is, is uh, I like Trulia better, but anyway, Zillow and Trulia are one and the same. Zillow bought Trulia, oh. and Redfin is a company that is another more a brokerage company, and they don't really do a lot in the they I they don't do a lot in the Bay Area, but they but people do use their site a lot. Uh, so that being said. How do you figure out what to price your property at? And really, the best source for pricing is an experienced agent, not just any agent, but someone that knows the neighborhood, knows what they're doing. They've been in the business for a long time. They know the cycles. They know what to do. And that is the most important question in real estate. How do I price my house? And, it, you know, really, not even necessarily what is my house worth, because bigger than that is once you find that out, how do I price it? Do I price it a little bit lower and get the multiple offers? If it's a house that has a lot of issues, like a lot of steps on a busy street and it's a two bedroom, you're gonna price it exactly where it's supposed to go because you're not getting multiple offers. You have a very narrow appeal. Um, so what to do here? We've got um, Zillow at 1345 and we've got uh, the appraiser at 1235. And I can tell you that often 
I get calls from appraisers and they're asking me, they haven't seen the property. Remember, the appraisers are looking at sold right. properties and they don't look at properties. So everyone thinks that the best source is an appraiser, but it's really not because they're usually calling the agents and asking questions. And we usually don't have time to talk to them. And, and it's all subjective. Like, was that updated a lot? Well, yeah, it was. What does that even mean? They haven't seen it. You know, why is one house two million and the one down the street is one four? So anyway. What's interesting about the question, Patty, is that is that it suggests that if they price it wrong, they're going to make less money. But isn't it true that in, in many markets, if not most Bay Area markets, if you price it too low, you're going to get multiple offers anyway? It can be. But like I said, if it's a really unique, uh, well, unique is being kind. If it's a property with, with two or three issues, like a busy street and lots of steps to go up in a two-bedroom house and yeah. it's a cracked foundation, no. Um, but at the same time, it, it's the market's kind of changing. So you don't want to price it too low. But really, the truth is, Mark, like you said, do not price it too high. Because anything that's not on for New York Minute, then what's wrong with it? Yeah, yeah. Then it sits. Then the, the you know spin from the agent is discounted. And two months later, you're going to get an offer, you know, 10, 20 percent less, mm. and it's a grind. So how the question from the viewer is, what should I? How should I price my house? Well, given all of those dynamics, the only issue is, what does your really experienced realtor say? Yeah. And often what we do is bring in some our some of our colleagues, and 10 or 12 agents come through, and in the minute they'll say, here's what it's worth, and they have no extra to grind. They're not trying to get a listing. They're not trying to get it down for a buyer. It's simply professional courtesy and favor. So that's that's the deal. You need to find an agent that's really yeah, and you know, it's, it's funny because I, I know that agents oftentimes will get a, a, a knock uh, by consumers thinking, well, sure, you're happy to price it $100,000 too low because all, you know, you'll just sell it faster, get your commission, and move on to the next one and leave me hanging because it doesn't really impact your commission that much. How, how, do, you, how do you approach your clients and, and getting them the and giving them the best value for your services. Well, I also have oh you you know realtors just want a high price so they make more commission. Like neither of them really makes sense because we're here for the long haul and we're here for the referrals. We, we our business is always based on referral and the word of mouth bad word of mouth travels seven times faster than yeah. a good. I've referral. heard that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. So and and the truth is putting all of that aside just want to people are honest we're honest people we want to do the right thing we get joy out of having our clients win and getting as much as possible and and then the truth is you might make suggestions that the seller doesn't want to take it they don't want to take it but anyway right. the, the point is it, it really our commission is irrelevant yeah and you, and you know you really at the end of the day you really it's hard to fool the market it is. It's really hard to fool the market. It's a very, it's not completely efficient. It's not quite as efficient as the stock market, but mm. we have a pretty efficient marketplace here in the Bay Area. True. I think of it as like water level. Water finds its level, and, it, and so does pricing. Yeah. Regardless of where you start out, it's going to just find a level. Yep. Agreed. Yeah. All right. Perfect timing for number uh, three. Sure, this question. Number three. For what artistic reason? were many males castrated in Europe in the 17th and 18th century? A medical reason? Uh, artistic oh, reason. Artistic yeah, reason. for oh, what okay. artistic reason? All right, that's our trivia question, all right? 888-912-1190. Don't set that down. The best of investments are going to be right back. Oh, this thing's blowing up. Oh, it's supposed to close tomorrow, and it's just blasting me. What it's do they say? Oh, She's considered a pig of a house, anyway. Oh, God. Yeah. So, once all again, the Rodney King, uh, you know, that's all again, get it all. Yeah, speaking of Rodney King, there's, uh, there's um, CNN's doing some really nice specials. They did a, a five part special on OJ. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah, yeah. I didn't see it, but I heard it was pretty good. It was. Really? It was. <coughs> what are we doing on the next one? The next one, well, we, we have your email question, too. My email question. Are we on talk? Can we ask the last one? Uh, yeah. This will be the fourth one. Yeah. Yeah. It's a long it's one. Four right? is nine minutes, and nineteen seconds. The last one's five minutes. Oh, yes, nine nineteen. Okay, okay yeah. so we got a nice long one. All right. Um, what else did you what bring in? What's going on? Well, that the U.S. economy is on pace for the longest 
if it's, if it's, if it's a 10-year growth cycle, it's the longest oh, in history. Record. It would never hit 10 years, uh, <coughs> recession to recession. Wow. Yeah, and it's due uh, for three more. Uh, it sure looks like it. <coughs> um, okay, that's kind of interesting. Okay, we've got a large question, and then we'll do you. Okay. Did you give, give out your information? <coughs> no. no okay, sure. so let, we'll do that then. Well, welcome back to the Best of Investing. One more time, I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Mark Hahn and Patty Cohen. Third trivia question was, for what artistic reason were many males castrated in Europe in the 17th and 18th century? It was, um, they were they were singing, right? It basically, yeah, to uh, retain a high-pitched soprano singing voice. Uh, I mean, to a retain a high pitched soprano singing voice. So you, so you didn't practice that? I didn't Ouch. practice that, no. <laughs> I know. I, 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 we always thought that was a joke when we were kids, but I yeah. guess, uh, well, I don't know. It's probably still a joke. Uh, quick mention here also for the 101 Surf Sports located in uh, 3rd Street in San Rafael. You guys ever done stand up, stand up paddle boarding? It's very difficult. Really? Yeah. Oh, I, it's a good I, workout. I thought it was pretty easy. Yeah. It's a good workout. I thought it was a pretty easy workout, too. Um, You're such a snap. Oh, okay. oh, thank you very much. <laughs> radio audience, if you can only see. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I say, you got to pay some radio. www.101surfsports.com or call 415-524-8492. It's not that hard. I'm an indoor cat. Oh, okay. Well, that, yeah. You know what? Paddle boarding indoors is tough. <laughs> okay. Doesn't slide across that carpet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, Patty, uh, before we cut the break, didn't get a chance to tell people, you know, oh, your thank phone you. number and everything. Yeah, well, uh, if you have any questions, no obligation whatsoever. I'm Patty Cohn, C-O-H-N. I'm with Pacific Union International in Marin County. Cover some of the rest of the Bay Area. And I'm at 415-722-4842. And do take her up on that that offer. It's really, you know, no obligation. And when, when, you know, when a good realtor tells you that, they almost always mean it. Really, yeah. I know people are afraid. They think they're going to get like you know oh, you corralled into yeah. something or harassed yeah. Yeah. mercilessly. Very good. Yeah, very that's good. Not, not high help. pressure like that. Yeah. Uh, very good to, to get some good good advice from her. And then if you like her, uh, which you will, you don't want to recommend her. Okay, uh, Mark. An email comes in for you. It says my father passed away recently and left it. This kind of actually feeds into kind of what you're talking about on your other deal. Mm -hmm. My father passed away recently and left his house to me, my brother, and my sister. My brother lives in the house and wants to buy out mine and my sister's portion of the ownership, but he doesn't qualify for a bank loan. I know he could probably get a private loan, but what will a bank need to see from him in the future for him to qualify for a refinance? Ooh, that's helpful. kind of a long one. Yeah, a long one. And, and so kind of to, to paraphrase that question, um, and this happens a lot. Uh, and what also happens a lot is you know, the second parent passes, and um, one of the beneficiaries, one of the uh, uh, children, are living in the home. And so, uh, without knowing the details about what they mean by they don't bank qualify, maybe they don't bank qualify now, but they could bank qualify later. So one of the things that we will do is, we will consider helping that uh, sibling or that beneficiary uh, purchase the home, which really means buying out uh, the siblings. So typically if all three of them inherited the property and two would like to cash out, um, you know, oftentimes all three want to cash out and sometimes they'll come to us for a loan to help them remodel the property so they can, you know, capture the most equity when they sell. Here in this case, two want to sell, one wants to keep it, and in fact they're already living in it, so now we're talking about a consumer transaction, going back to what we talked about a couple of uh, segments ago about it being a consumer versus a, uh, uh, an investment or flip type of situation. So it's a consumer situation. So the consumer protections come into mind, which uh, come into play, which means, uh, among other things, we have to determine the viability of the borrower and their ability to make the monthly payments. So we would look and see what kind of income he has. And we could look at different types of income than a bank. We'll look at more types of income than a bank, and we can look at expected, reasonably expected future income where many banks won't. So if we can look at all of that, and we determine, you know what, we can paper this properly, we can demonstrate that yes, indeed, uh, the borrower slash buyer uh, can afford the payments on our loan, which are gonna be higher than the payments on a conventional loan. Private money loans tend to be 
uh, anywhere from uh, eight to ten percent, depending on the variables. But uh, you know, between eight and ten percent is, is pretty standard on the interest rate for a, for a private real estate loan. And if we determine he has the ability to to make those payments, uh, the next thing we're going to look at is the exit strategy. We typically don't make you know thirty year loans or long term loans. We're really a, a plan B. Uh, strategy to hey let's capture the property for the client and then you know we'll help them uh, or maybe they already have a relationship with a conventional mortgage broker but if not we'll help them find a conventional or a, a less expensive or lower rate exit so if we determine that uh, you know that in fact you know through a combination of maybe there's some credit repair that could be done maybe he's got a score that uh, could easily be bumped up 100 points if he did a few things, uh, or he's got some expected future income, uh, or other, other factors come into play, we would make that loan. We probably wouldn't make the loan if he's living in the house and has no job, um, but he thinks he could do this, that, or the other thing. In other words, sure. a wish and a prayer, because again, it, we, really, you know, we really aren't uh, in the business of foreclosing, and if we make a loan, the payments have to be made. And so we're, we're, we're not in the business of bailing out people in financially distressed situations, generally speaking. Uh, Mostly it's a, it's a transactional distress. How often do you lend someone, the money, not for personal residence, but for a rental property, how often do you lend enough money where they say, lend me the extra money, uh, still keep it below 70%, and, and keep a year's worth of payment, basically, to make the loan? Well, we can do that. That actually, in our industry, in the private money lending industry, it used to be actually quite common to uh, make a loan that included interest, yeah. either an interest reserve or prepaid interest. I, I did many loans where a year's worth of interest was baked into the loan, as we call it. We would uh, we would make them a loan for a hundred thousand dollars, and if it was a twelve percent loan, which wasn't uncommon many years ago. Uh, we'd add twelve thousand dollars to that amount, and maybe we'd add the fees on top of that, and maybe we'd make them a loan for one hundred twenty thousand uh, dollars. And um, after the fees and, and the um, reserves and et cetera, they basically get in their pockets one hundred thousand uh, dollars, assuming there wasn't any debt on the property, um, and they wouldn't have to make a payment. Those have tended to fall out of favor nowadays because what we found is um, the actual likelihood of default is actually pretty high yeah. in a prepaid interest loan. Uh, so even on the investment side, we're, we're not making as many of those. And among the predatory lending practices decreed by the Dodd-Frank financial reforms, it's actually illegal now for a lender for a resident, personal, for, for resident, a personal yeah. residence on a consumer purpose loan for us to, to charge prepaid interest. We are not allowed to collect more than 60 days advance interest on a consumer purpose loan. So we're not even, even if the borrower wants it, we can't give it to yeah. them. But, yeah. but on a rental property, I guess if the loan to value is low enough. If the loan, loan to value is low yeah, enough. You might still entertain it. Right, well, and, and again, we're, we're looking to do no harm. And I actually, I, I really truly mean that. And there are a lot of really, really good companies in the private lending industry. There are some not so good. There are some loan to own companies out there, people that will make you a loan and if you don't pay, they're gonna foreclose right away. We wanna make loans that um, as part of a strategy to um, either uh, sell the property or get cheaper financing. We do not want you to get stuck with our loan. So if we think that, you know, um, and we do get these requests sometimes. You know, I want, uh, I need 100% financing, uh, or I need cash out financing on, on uh, uh, rental property or investment property. I want, I want you to bake in the interest, and, and uh, I just need to net this much out. Um, well, how are you gonna pay us back? Well, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. And, and they don't really have a plan. Yeah. And I, we're, we're nervous about those. We don't want people stuck in our Well, I, yeah, I, I heard about one loan request. This guy owns property on both sides of an airstrip. Oh. And, yeah, and, it, and it, there's yeah. nothing on it. I mean, he wants not very marketable. Yeah, exactly. And he says, <laughs> "Yeah, he goes, give me, you know, give me a three-year loan for like two million dollars." And I said, "Well, what's the exit strategy?" He goes, "I don't know. That's that's why I'm give, asking for the loan. It'll take me two or three years to figure it out." <laughs> Let me think about it. No. All right. For more information, go to PacificPrivateMoney.com. Don't touch that dial. Professor Investing will be right back oh with some closing comments. Two to three years to figure it out. Give me some money. That's funny that Rick told me about that one night. He said, "Are you serious?" <laughs> 
Two million dollars for yours. What's your exit strategy? I don't know. I need to be exit strategy. I'm thinking two million. I'm gonna go to Costa Rica. Yeah, right. scarce. So you get yeah. uh, you get the last part, uh, Patty. Go ahead and talk okay. about. Uh, oh, yeah, oh, that's right. You got some. We'll, we'll close with a, on a high note. Yeah. Oh. Happy days are. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Did, you, did you read oh. the paper Michael Savage got attacked? No, I yes. didn't. I didn't see in Tiburon. In Tiburon at Servino's restaurant. Yeah. Now, Michael Are Savage is like kidding? five foot eight, five six, or something like that. Some guy, six feet something, hassled him to the point where Michael said, Get away from me or something. Yeah, I don't think I know you. Him. And then some, some good Samaritan comes in and the guy hits him too. Yeah. Yeah. And then and the guys are like, oh, Michael Savage started it. Like, yeah, I don't think that, I don't think so. Not if he's five foot six. You and know, he's trying to make a case old. that it was. Uh, politically motivated, but it doesn't really matter what it's motivated, it still yeah. happened. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I guess that would make it a hate crime. I know, and that's that the thing, is, 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 is politics considered a hate crime? Yeah, yeah. I know, right? Because, it, you know, I guess anything other than, like, I'm robbing you, of course it should yeah. matter. I'm curious as to why that guy would, would, would know him, because again, you have to kind well, of... Well, he did. He, was, he goes, aren't you Michael Wiener? Because yeah. that's his real name, oh, right? right? So he yeah. knew who he was. Mm. Yeah, that's why he was picking on him, because of the, the Trump thing. Because Trump apparently said, he goes, I would not, apparently, he said, I would not have been president except for that guy, Michael, yeah. Michael Savage, because of his millions of listeners. He gave oh, Savage a lot of credit. Okay, are you ready? Yeah, not yeah. 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 There we go. Okay. Welcome back to The Best of Investing. Last time for today, I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Mark Hawk and Patty Cohen. Patty, let's end up on a high note. Well, it's a hot market, and as evidenced by... The U.S. economy is on pace for 10-year growth forecast, which is the longest stretch of prosperity on record. So that'd be 10 so years between cycles. Yeah. And we've years. never had 10 years go by? I, I thought, thought we did. Apparently not. Wow. Um, yeah. So the, they project that the U.S. job market will grow by 3.2% over the next four years, and job forecast jobs in to improve by 1.5% in 2017, gradually slowing. And of course, what's going to help is relaxed regulations and lower taxes, and also projected to benefit the, the American economy. So it's it's definitely um, happening, and it's we're waiting for when the other shoe is going to drop. And it really like we're seeing it slow, but it's still the, the rate of appreciation is slowing, but I, it's I've, still. I've hot. heard some predictions about you know the stock market going up like. Crazy, like some ridiculous, like forty thousand, you know. But really? then it's going to come back down, like even faster. That's you know. But if you anybody know, could even remotely accurately predict that, they wouldn't. They probably wouldn't share that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll tell you, I remember when the stock market was at two thousand. Yeah. And I remember telling clients, I said, "Listen, the market's going to hit four thousand. I just don't know when." Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we're all going to die. Exactly. There you yeah. go. Yeah. It's the truth. So you know. It, it, how much credit do I get for that? Well, and the, there are other articles in support of that. I'm seeing a lot of articles that are, are um, pretty bullish on the economy. Here's a Fannie Mae report. And these guys are, are fa the Fannie Mae Economic and Strategic Research Report, uh, a highly followed report. Um, it says, thanks to rising household net worth and health healthy jobs data, consumer spending should remain the primary driver of growth. And for those of you who know a little bit about the economics, Consumer spending is a very, very important part of uh, the economy and economic growth. Consumer sentiment is always a, 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 a future uh, driver. Well, and if you economy. keep taxes low, mm -hmm. are a lot of people going to save that money or are they going to spend it? Yeah. yeah. General business and economic right. sentiment right. remain strong yeah. despite policy uncertainty. Uh, home sales should continue to improve this year despite affordability challenges, including continued strong home price appreciation due to scarce inventory. And then it goes on to say, tight inventory remains a boon to home prices and Americans' net worth, but it also continues to price out many would-be first-time home buyers. However, our research suggests that aging millennials now boasting higher real wages are beginning to narrow the homeownership attainment gap. Wait a minute, did you say aging millennials? You're making me feel I know. Old. That's <laughs> 40 year olds. Aging millennials. Yeah. Is there such a thing yeah. in our age, right? Yeah. Wow. So um, so anyway, you know, that's 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 all really that's all really good. And 
you know, the, the Fed you know, raised the interest rate again this week. The stock market did not crash. Um, mortgage rates, which are long-term, not really based on the short-term uh, uh, federal funds rate, which went up, but uh, still um, you know, adjusted upwards a little bit, not a huge amount. Uh, this week, we're at about uh, uh, the average 30-year, I think, is... Um, 4.3%, which is the highest it's been uh, in 2017, and that's up from about a, a, a low of 3.7 um, within the last few months. So it's you know it's, it's up uh, 60 basis points. Um, still very very affordable um, if your income is up in the Bay Area, and many uh, many uh, incomes are. Uh, you can still there's still a lot of home uh, that you can buy here in the Bay Area. And uh, before we cut out, Mark, your fund uh, is still paying over what seven and a half percent, isn't it? We just uh, released uh, for February, and we were at an annualized rate of seven point six percent. So we're yes, we've been uh, we've been pretty much right around you know between seven and a half and eight uh, percent up and down on an annualized yield. Uh, give us a, on that. Yep, PacificPrivateMoney.com. All right, we're gonna cut out for today. Here's our thoughts of the day: Life will always throw you curves. Just keep fouling them off. Yes. The right pitch will come, and when it does, be prepared to run the bases. I like that. Nice. And Yogi Berra, we love him, said, Little League Baseball is a very good thing because it keeps the parents off the streets. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. Right. All right. Tune in next week to The Best of Investing. We're going to be giving away more free prizes for answering trivia questions. Thanks for listening. On behalf of our team, I'm Edward Brown. We're wishing you the best of investing. So long. Oh, my God. Yeah. Let's go show. Freaking stuff going on. Oh, sorry. You gotta go put out fires now. Well, now Margaret, Nestor, I'm a little too much.